Hey guys, so it's Lisa, hi. Um, yeah, so we're under quarantine like everybody else. Um, it's kind of an okay thing, I don't know. We're just trying to be safe. So I'm cooking lunch and dinner every day for like eight people. So I thought I would just put up little videos because everybody's bored. I'm um, doing really simple food, trying not to waste food and trying to use perishable food first and save all our canned goods for later, God forbid. Um, if we can't get anything fresh. So I just want to let you know what I'm doing and I'm going to just start posting like my lunch and dinner videos. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, stay safe everybody. So I'm basically kneading this dough. This is pizza dough. I made it two days ago. So it sat for 48 hours, which is great. Um, using lots of flour so it doesn't stick. I'm stretching it gently, rotating it clockwise. And that way the, the middle's kind of spreading out. The dough is getting thinner in the middle and they're getting a little thicker towards the, the crust, more like a New York crust. Okay. Just gently letting my thumbs kind of let the dough pull without ripping through it. Not always easy if you have nails. I don't. Look at that nice air bubble. <clears throat> I like that size. Okay, so okay, so I'm just gonna transfer this, knock off a little bit of this flour. And I'm putting on a piece of parchment paper. I don't really like putting cornmeal down. This way I know it's definitely gonna slide into the oven. And I turned a sheet pan upside down. So Watch this. You're going down. Perfect every time. And I have another sheet pan on top um, acting as a pizza stone. So I have two pizza stones. And uh, this way I can do more pizzas at the same time and get a nice crust. Check on this dough. some Brussels sprouts to roast. So I just cut off the root end and then cut it in half. You can do this, get nice cross sections so those get nice and crispy and brown. So you have more surface area from that one slice as opposed to just that. So you can cut it through any way you want, but it's nice to make slices like that, or you can just have rounds. just going to uh, put these in water and put them in the salad spinner, get any residual dirt out of there, and then we're going to roast them. So this is my kind of foolproof way of not doing dishes. I cover uh, sheet pans and I use them throughout the day and I just replace the top paper. So I cut like two foot and a half inch pieces and I put them side by side and then I have one longer one that fits the length of the sheet pan just curl it under All right so I have this nice like protective packet like juices unless they're really high they don't even go over the side and then I take my parchment paper like this, which fits exactly, I love these pre-cut sheets, they're the best. And then I'm gonna put uh, my Brussels sprouts on here. I'm gonna put a little bit of avocado oil. You can use any oil, um, olive oil, walnut oil, avocado oil, canola oil. Anyway, um, just a little salt and pepper. I like to use kosher salt. Once you know the feel of your salt, 
you know how much to use. Okay, this is a little salt and pepper. I'm just gonna mix this around to try and get some of that oil underneath and kind of squish it into the Brussels sprouts because they're really dry. Um, and by the way, after I cut these, we, we put them in cold water, let them sit, and then put them in a salad spinner to get all the liquid out so they're really clean, which is great. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, so we're just trying to like soften it, almost like kale. And I'm gonna put this on a sheet pan. Normally, I'd probably spread this between two pans, but you know, we're in a crisis right now. I'm just gonna do it on one, being a little bit lazy, sorry. Good song, by the way. Okay, so we're just gonna cheese these pieces up. I like the thicker cut mozzarella. I like the way it melts better. So I'm making three margarita pizzas. And then two mushroom onion truffle oil pizzas. So those are good, loving it. Now we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil spray on these two crusts. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm gonna put this Parmesan cheese down on the bottom and I want it to stick. And it's olive oil flavor, which goes nicely with pizza. And because we do that, we can even like season the pizza from the ground under. So put like a little bit of salt, not a lot because the cheese is salty and a little pepper. It's all about layering flavors. So um, I'm also gonna put, what's up bird? A little bit of um, onion flakes. This is like a totally underused spice. But they don't do well under direct heat, they burn. So that's why I'm putting them in the bottom layer. Okay, and then I sauteed these mushrooms. They're just um, button mushrooms and one, a half of yellow onion in olive oil. Um, I let them, let them cool. So I did them like an hour ago. It's like one of the first things I did for my prep today just to get it out of the way because it could sit. And I don't want to put it on the pizza warm. Anyway, um, these have a really nice depth of flavor. So I'm just spreading them out as best as I can. And then if I had it, but I don't have everything I want in my pantry right now or a refrigerator, I would put Gruyere on this, but I don't have it. So mozzarella is awesome, totally fine. And I don't put a lot, just kind of a sprinkling. So it gets like a crust on top as opposed to like a pool of cheese, if that makes sense. And then I do a little pep over here. And because I um, pre-baked this dough, I was able to top them and now put them back in the oven and put more in at one time because I can move them around easily. Um, so we kind of par cook them. All right, so we're going in the oven. That ground chicken, the chicken meatballs. Now that it's cool um, to the touch, with gloves, I'm just breaking it up and mashing it almost like um, chili, just because it's gonna separate better on the pizza, so you can kind of get a, a little piece in every bite. So remember, this is gra um, ground chicken, ground white meat chicken, um, sauteed with some seasonings, uh, salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and then tossed in um, marinara sauce. So that's where we get that kind of the wet texture is from the sauce. I don't know, I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? I think it was great. You do? Yeah. 
It's making me really, really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> really. Um, I watched an Anthony Bourdain the other night when he was sleeping, and um, he was in Seattle, and he was smoking a joint on his balcony because it's le it was legal there. It was like the only state at the time, I believe. And um, he handed it to the cameraman, and he took a hit, and then you know handed it back to Anthony, and then Anthony handed it to the other cameraman. You know, camera A, camera B. <clears throat> it was so funny, and um, we know the DP on it. I won't say his name in case it's, it's live, <laughs> and it's awesome. He's amazing. I'm gonna slice the steak now. <clears throat> it's a flank steak, and I, I slit it on the diag diagonal with a knife, not too deep, just like less than a quarter inch in on both sides just to help the spices penetrate. And I put this special barbecue rub on and um, olive oil, and I really massaged it in, and I put it under the broiler. So now we're just gonna slice against the grain. And with flank steak, you really wanna um, slice it as thin as possible because it tends to be a little bit chewy. Look at that, that's like a perfect medium rare. Um, it's juicy, but it's not bloody. So it was in the oven for probably um, 20, 20 minutes on broil. Uh, I turned it once, so about 10 minutes through. And then, you know what? I let it sit for like 45 minutes. And that's why the color is so beautiful like that. Because the meat had a chance to relax. And the blood just doesn't, you know when you cut a steak and it's all over your cutting board, the blood and the juice, and you're losing all the flavor. So you want to keep the, the flavor in the meat and juicy. And that just creates this nice pink kind of smoked look to it like smoked meat. It's just yummy. Anyway, and I think most people are comfortable eating beef at this temperature, even like the kind of squeamish ones. Here in the center, the thickest part, it's getting a little bit more rare. It's really nice. Just sliced all this meat. It really looks beautiful. It's a little bit spicy, um, which was intended. But anyway, I'm gonna put this back in the juice that's in the bottom of this pan. And this is like, I'd have to say one in a hundred times that I didn't put parchment in a pan because that's like my move on everything. Um, anyway, it's fine. So I'm just tossing that, but because it's like a little bit spicy, I'm gonna add the juice of two limes and that acid um, is gonna cut into the flavor a little bit and just balance it out. And lime pairs really well with skirt steaks. Like, Usually you get limes with fajitas, which is skirt steak, um, tacos. So it's like a, kind of a natural pairing, if that makes sense. I think I'm only gonna put the juice of one lime because they were pretty juicy. Um, okay, now as the last step, I'm just gonna taste this for salt. I use just like a touch just a touch of kosher salt. I took my other glove off to get the salt because it had meat juice on it. But I still have this one glove in my working hand. And I'm just gonna put this in here. <clears throat> now we're feeding like eight adults, so that's just part of dinner, but I'm trying to have the meat be like not the center of the meal which is healthier for us anyway, but we're also trying to conserve meat in the house. So anyway, um, I'm making pizzas with some, you know, that's why I put the chicken meatball on there because it's kind of extending the meat a lot throughout the meal. Okay, I'm gonna get my tongs and give them a stir in one second. Oh, right here. Oh. Just really keep them around a little bit because I'm kind of sharing this space. That's not a very New York. I'm kind of sharing this space. Hey, oh, bird. Jesus. These just came out of the oven. These are the thinly sliced Brussels sprouts that I put on a sheet pan. Um, see how much they shrink? Some get crispy, some stay a little bit soft. 
they just had basically olive oil, salt, and pepper. Um, so I just kind of sp spun them around to kind of expand the moisture. I want to put a little bit of olive oil for flavor, but I don't want to put a lot of oil for calories. We don't need that much. So I'm just going to spray it to give you the flavor. <clears throat> and then um, I like this um, truffle balsamic, like two of my favorite flavors. And we're also having mushroom pizza tonight and like the balsamic kind of plays off the mushrooms. Anyway, so Brussels sprouts, they can be like a little bit mushy. So what I like to do is put um, toasted sesame seeds on there and it gives a little bit of texture. I know like usually you associate sesame seeds with like Asian flavors and this is definitely not Asian flavors, but it um, doesn't have to be. You know, there's cross-cultural cross -cultural food. Okay, now I'm just gonna put for the final touch um, a little Malden sea salt, which is just a flaky salt um, that's really good for garnishing and it gives it great texture. I'm gonna just do a, kind of a no-no there. I kind of want to serve these right away because um, they get, they just kind of get mushy, but they're delicious. And this is like a, a good way to um, also, if you have like leftover chicken or beef and it's, you can crumble it up and you can saute that and add that to the Brussels sprouts and that's like a whole meal in a bowl. Guys, okay, so it's day two of quarantine and I'm making potato skins. And I basically baked the um, potatoes, the Idaho potatoes washed and baked at 500 degrees in the oven for 45 minutes. And I've just cut them in half and scooped them out. And now I'm spraying some olive oil spray on them so that they get nice and crispy on the inside. And I'm gonna add some kosher salt and some other spices. You can add any spices you want. I always start with salt and pepper and then kind of build from there. So we got salt and pepper. I'm gonna do some paprika for color and a little bit of turmeric, which is beautiful in color and it actually is really good for you. The muscle aches, and I'm gonna put these in the oven for like 20 minutes to crisp them and then we're gonna fill them with some cheese. Okay guys, so uh, for lunch with the potato skins, I'm also making um, grilled chicken. So I just cleaned um, boneless skinless chicken breasts and I put them on a uh, grill on top of the stove because it's raining outside and just got marks on both sides. And they have a little bit of salt and pepper on them. And now I just, um, I squeezed some um, tangerines in here. I'm gonna put a little bit of poison sauce and a little bit of rice wine vinegar just to give it a little extra flavor and I'm going to whisk that together and then just pour it over the top and then put these in the oven for about 20 minutes and as I'm putting these in let's see how our potato skins are doing hey baby so the chicken's on top, these are coming out. Look at that, Woohoo! Nice, get some cheese in there. Babies just came out of the oven and I'm putting um, Mexican cheese on there, organic Mexican cheese. And look at how nice and crispy they are. Holy moly, if I had it my way, I'd be putting some bacon on here, but I don't have any and some scallions, but I don't have any scallions either. So we're just gonna make do. These are still gonna be delicious. Um, I'm gonna put these in the oven so the cheese can melt. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna saute some broccoli and we're gonna put broccoli on top to make this a little bit of a healthier dish. Okay guys, so this is day two quarantine lunch. I'm gonna just take this chicken out that had the whole chicken on it and the rice wine vinegar and the tangerine juice. And now I'm putting in broccoli that I salted and oiled. And I started cooking it in a pan, but then I changed my mind. I'm just gonna roast it in the oven for like 10 minutes. And here are our potato skins with cheese in it. I'm gonna put that in the oven so it melts. And then in like 10 minutes, I'm gonna put more cheese on the broccoli and we'll be set. Okay. Um, the chicken that I got today, I was lucky to get some chicken breast and I'm just taking off the tender and I'm putting it in one bag. 
And then I'm taking off any kind of grizzly yucky stuff. Um, and I'm putting it in this bowl. And this I'm gonna make chicken stock with. Because we just wanna use everything we can. And then I have this nice clean breast that I'm gonna put in a bag uh, with the other ones and freeze for tomorrow. Okay guys, so this broccoli just came out of the oven and it's nicely roasted, but not too mushy. A little bit of char, which I like. And I put a little bit of extra cheese on there. And we're just gonna top these potato skins with some broccoli to make it a little bit healthier. And, you know, we're not doing a lot of fancy garnishes. We don't want to waste food right now. So we're really using, like, just what we need. So we have our nice potato skins. We have just, like, a simple green salad and our chicken breast. And that's, that's day two quarantine lunch. Not so bad. Hey, so it's day two dinner. Quarantine cuisine. Um, so tonight, cooking lamb chops um, with just a simple salt, pepper, olive oil, sliced garlic, rosemary from the garden. And then I had these um, store prepared artichokes that were, were in that kind of olive oil. So I took the olive oil from the artichokes and I put it over the lamb chops. So I thought that would be really cool. Um, I'm gonna roast these. This is gonna be a salad, the artichokes and the peas. I don't know what else is going in there yet. Um, I'm gonna roast some butternut squash. I'm gonna saute some green beans. Um, and do something with these peppers. So I'll get back to you, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna toss this and then I'll update you. Okay, so I marinated the lamb chops for like three hours in that artichoke oil, rosemary, um, sliced garlic, salt, pepper, um, and a little bit of garlic powder. And I'm gonna put them in the oven now, on convection roast. So they're cooked to your desired temperature. And then over here, I just finished this really simple salad. I took those pre-prepared artichokes and I tossed them with some frozen peas and some cucumber. And I put a little bit of um, the oil that was in with the artichokes, the reserved oil, and balsamic vinegar, salt and pepper. That's it, really simple, clean, um, all green, really nice. And then I just, on the side, roasted some butternut squash. I just um, peeled it and diced it. Olive oil, salt and pepper, and some turmeric. And that's it, I put that in the oven at 450 for like 20 minutes. So, um, you know, we're trying to get our veggies in. So I'm making like a vegetable kind of saucy topping for my lamb chops. And literally like so much of what I'm doing right now is just off the top of my head, kind of free flowing. I'm not really like doing my normal recipes because I'm just trying to use what we have and be creative um, and stretch things out because we don't know how long we're gonna be in this situation. We're only, this is the only day two for me in quarantine. So, I mean, we've been kind of self quarantining for like two weeks, but now it's like serious. We're not going anywhere. We're not interacting with anyone but the people in our house. So I'm using two different pans because um, I have a lot of vegetables that I'm going to put in here and I just chopped like half of a yellow, a uh, half of a white onion and I put it in with some, um, some olive oil. Turn that down to like a medium heat, like a little too high. Let these cook for a minute. Um, I'm going to add some kosher salt, which helps release the liquid from the onions. Oh baby. Okay, cool. Um, we're going to add these little tiny bell peppers, the little mini ones that we just cut into little rounds. They're so pretty, really colorful. We want to eat the rainbow, as always. All right, I'm going to give that a couple minutes and we'll come back. Okay, so my lamb chops have been in for like 10 minutes and I actually put them on broil um, instead of roast just to get a little bit more color. They're doing really nice. I'm just going to switch the bottom to the top because 
when you're using a broiler, it's the direct heat is from the top. So these look really, really good. I'm gonna put them back. And they should be done in about 10 more minutes and then we'll let them sit and rest for maybe another 15. Okay. So my peppers and onions have cooked down a little bit. Um, so they're taking much less space in the pan. So I'm actually gonna combine them. Let me do this this way so you can see. I'm gonna combine them into one pan now. This is slightly awkward. Okay, so they're in one pan. And I'm gonna add a little bit of turmeric. I use a lot of turmeric. You know, it's got a nice flavor. It's got a beautiful color, um, but it's really good for your joints. If you have any joint pain, it's a, it's a really good anti-inflammatory. And I have a lot of joint pain. So I kind of put it in everything. And then because I don't have a lot of herbs right now, I'm going to use this herb fest seasoning just to jazz this up a little bit. And this is just a pepper and onion mix. Really simple, it's gonna be sweet as everything cooks down. I'm gonna add a little chicken stock. Um, and then we're gonna smother the lamb chops with this. Visually, visually it's gonna be really beautiful. So I'm gonna give this like another minute or two. And then I'm gonna add, I'll just add it now. I'm gonna add some chicken stock. So it's, it kind of turned into a sauce. And I might even put a little butter in there. Okay, so I'm taking out my lamb chops. They look amazing, they smell amazing. I'm just gonna land them right here. Sorry, and um, wow, these look so gorgeous. We're so lucky right now, oh my God. Um, we're gonna let these rest for like 10, 15 minutes. You always wanna let your meat rest, more about that later. But I'm gonna just loosely cover them with a little foil so they don't get cold. But I don't wanna steam them by really like tightening the foil. Okay, be back soon. Okay, so our lamb chops are out and this is the um, pepper and onion mixture with a little bit of chicken stock. And see how it's getting like nice and soft. It's a little saucy. So I'm gonna add to about a half a stick of butter to this just to make it a little creamy. And that's gonna go on top of our lamb. And I don't know why, but I just feel like putting a little Lee and Terrans in here for that kind of umami flavor. Just that little hint that you're like, what's in that sauce? I don't know. Lee and Perrins, love it. Okay, and then over here, we've got some green beans. I probably should be using two pans, but a little lazy and I'm going to add this like sesame ginger teriyaki sauce to that. Yum! And some sliced almonds. Sounds so good. All right, we're almost ready. Okay, so I'm just getting ready to plate the lamb chops. They look amazing. Yummy. You know, this is hard times. I know we're gonna come through this and out the other side okay, but in the meantime, food is healing and it's the best thing we can do for each other is cook for each other, feed each other, stay six feet apart, don't go out, read a book, do some art, maybe sew that button on that's been off for a while. I don't know, anyway. Got a lot of lamb chops here, and then I'm gonna put this beautiful sauce. Hey, how are you? Look at that, woo baby. So this is um, day two quarantine dinner. Lamb chops broiled with onions and peppers and a nice chicken broth, butter sauce, and a little Worcestershire in there, and our sauteed sesame teriyaki string beans. 
with sliced almonds. We have some butternut squash, just a simple green salad because we have a lot of veg everywhere else. And artichokes, cucumbers, and peas. Not so bad. I hope you guys have a great night. Hey guys, so welcome back. It's day three of Quarantine Cuisine with me, Lisa, your buddy. Um, I'm tired, but we're just, we're pushing through and I'm trying to make the best of everything. So I just want to give you a little tip. I'm making chicken stock. The other day I broke down some chicken breast and I took kind of the grizzly pieces um, and I put them aside for this stock. And then I, I cooked the breast and I saved the tenders and we're gonna make fried chicken with the tenders later. But in the meantime, chicken stock is so easy to make and it's so cheap and we're gonna need it more now than ever. And this could also be chicken soup. But anyway, I'll figure out what I wanna do with it. But I just broke down a chicken that I'm roasting in the oven. So I'm adding this carcass and the wingtips to this water. You always wanna start your stock with cold water. So I have cold water basically just where these bolts are in the pot. And to this, I'm going to add quite a bit of salt. I'm gonna add some peppercorns whole, because this is gonna get strained. This will help give it some flavor. Some for, uh, dry thyme, because I don't have fresh. And then with some of these extra scrap vegetables, like onion skins, which give um, chicken stock or beef stock or um, veal stock, it gives them beautiful color. So you add those and I'm not wasting the skin and I'm also not utilizing the onion. So I'm gonna save that onion for something else. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the celery, all these little celery leaves that I don't particularly love personally. Um, you could use them in a salad, which would be great, but I'm saving the stalks for like a chili or even a crudite. I'm gonna throw these in here. I'm gonna throw, I have a little piece of ginger that's kind of turning, so I'm gonna throw that in there. And I have some like pre-cut carrots from the store. I'm not gonna put them all in, but I'm, I'm gonna put some because it adds some nice sweetness. So we'll do that. And if we wanted to make like a richer, darker chicken stock, we would roast the bones in the oven and put a little bit of tomato paste on there and a little olive oil. Get everything brown, not cooked, but just brown, and then put it in the pot and we'd have a much richer, deeper color but these onion skins actually help with the color a lot. So I'm gonna just, while we're here, just take this one, throw these babies in. And you know, I'm just starting my work day today with prepping for lunch and then dinner. So I'm gonna, this is the first thing that I'm doing. I'm just gonna put this on the back of the stove and we're gonna let it cook all day and then um, when it's finished later, I'll show you what we do. Okay. Hey, so I'm gonna make an avocado miso dressing. Um, I always make my salad dressings either in a bowl with a whisk, but it's really easy to do in the food processor or even uh, like a Vita prep. Um, so all I did so far was I put two cloves of garlic, pretty large ones, peeled, and I uh, ran the food processor to puree them up a little bit. And I added two avocados that were pretty large, um, but getting ready to turn, so instead of putting them in my salad, I thought I'd make a dressing out of it. And that will also allow me to have a creamy dressing without using like mayonnaise and a lot of oil because we're trying to conserve like everything we have. So basically I have salt, two cloves of garlic, two avocados. I'm gonna put um, some freshly ground black pepper. I'm gonna put a nice heaping <clears throat> tablespoon of miso paste. This is a white miso paste. I'm going to put the juice of two tangerines. If you don't have tangerines, you can use lemons, you can use limes, you can use a regular orange, you can use grapefruit, you could add a little ponzu if you have that in a jar. Any citrus will work. Okay, then I'll add a little bit of rice wine vinegar. If you don't have rice wine vinegar, you can add balsamic vinegar, you can add white vinegar, you can add... Um, any vinegar you have. That's a good thing with vinaigrettes. You can kind of substitute all the ingredients with other things in the same family. Okay, so I'm gonna run this. So 
right now it's nice and creamy. It almost looks like guacamole. So we want to loosen it up a little bit. So I'm going to add about a tablespoon or less of low sodium soy sauce and some olive oil. And you can add any oil, canola oil, olive oil. I probably wouldn't add extra virgin olive oil unless you have to, but a lighter oil would probably be better. Canola. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's super noisy. Let me just taste this. So good, oh my God. Now, if this is too thick for you, you can add a little bit, <laughs> here you go. You can add a little bit of water, and I think I'm gonna do that. Just a tiny little bit, just to loosen it up. Give me one second, I'll be right with you. Okay, so I'm adding a quarter cup of water. Let me get a fresh spoon. And this would also be really good over like grilled chicken mm. or shrimp or steak. I mean, this is just almost like an Asian guacamole, you know? Okay, see you later. Hey guys, so here we are, day three, quarantine cuisine. We're getting some prep for dinner ready. We're making roasted cauliflower. I'm super excited for this recipe. It's so easy and so delicious. Um, making cauliflower for like eight people, so that's a lot of cauliflower. Um, you know, cauliflower, it's like the new it vegetable, like Brussels sprouts were and kale was, and it's so trendy and weird, I don't get it, but cauliflower is great, love it. It's inexpensive, it's good for you. It doesn't have a lot of flavor in general, so you can put anything on it and you can make it Italian flavor, you can make it Asian flavor, you can make it Southwestern, you can make it Creole, anything you want. You can make it spicy, you can make a soup. I mean, we can go on and on and on, but we don't have that much time. So here, my handy dandy sheet pan that I always have my foil and my parchment paper because we don't want to do anything later, but remove this paper, possibly use the pan again. I've used it like three separate times today for other things and you just replace the parchment paper so I'm not wasting all that foil and I'm not spending time doing dishes. My hands are like dry enough, I don't need to be... Okay, so we're gonna put a little avocado oil on the bottom and I already started cutting some of the cauliflower and I'm gonna move it over here to get it off my board and then I'm gonna show you how I cut it like that. Because I know it looks like it's all florets but that wasn't really the intention that I wanted. What I wanna do is show you that I take these green leaves off and kind of just break them. And then I take my knife and I get in there and just go like that and get rid of them. Okay, so this is all to be discarded, although we probably could have saved that for stock, but we'll do that another time. And then what I like to do is first off, this cauliflower is, you know, it's not, it's perfectly fine, but it does have some blemishes on it. If you can see those little black marks, um, it's not a big deal at all. It's totally usable. All you do is you just literally just take a sharp knife and just do that and they're gone. Okay. It's like taking, you know, the black away from an avocado. So you certainly wouldn't want to throw this away because of that, especially since we're being so careful with our food sources right now. Um, so anyway, I'm just gonna do that. It's totally fine, no big deal. Get it off my cutting board. The dog will clean it up in a minute, I'm sure. And then what I like to do is make a cross section because I like cauliflower to get crispy. So I cut down and you see how it stays attached? Sorry, see how it stays attached like that? Because I'm keeping that root end on. Whoops, you know, it looks like a brain inside, which is kind of fun. And I've heard once before, I think from my good friend, Krista, who's another food stylist chef, 
that um, a lot of vegetables resemble different organs and whatever organ they resemble, that's the organ they're good for. So I believe cauliflower is good for your brain. I don't know, we'll have to look that up. But anyway, I'm taking, you know, the large pieces out, but I just want it to get crispy. So having those nice flat surfaces is great. And a lot of times what I do is I heat a pan any kind of pan, a nonstick or a cast iron or a stainless steel pan, and I heat it till it's smoking hot, and then I add oil when I'm ready, and I put the cauliflower down with these cross sections like that and sear them on both sides until they're super brown, and if I need to, I'll, I'll finish them in the oven, and they get like crispy and crunchy and delicious. Anyway, so I'm now gonna put a little bit of oil on the top, not a lot, and for this, I'm gonna add some kosher salt. Salt brings out the flavor and everything. We don't want it to taste salty. We just want it to taste flavorful. So without salt, you know, the flavor doesn't really come out. And that's why a lot of people put salt even in desserts because it just brings the flavor out. Okay, that was, sorry, that was curry powder. This is, somebody's calling. Um, hi, True, I think it's true. Um, smoked pap paprika. And turmeric, God, I hate when that happens. Turmeric, you know I told you before, which is so good for your joint pain, and it's an anti-inflammatory spice. Um, that was garlic powder, and now black pepper. And that's it. So we had curry powder, turmeric, smoked paprika, salt and pepper, a little bit of avocado oil, and we're gonna roast this in the oven at 450 degrees until it's golden brown. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Hey guys, so it's day three, quarantine cuisine. I'm still here, it's Lisa. Um, we made chicken stock today because we had a carcass of a whole chicken and I had some scraps from those boneless chicken breasts from the other day and some ends of onions and celery and carrots and peppercorns. And this isn't a super rich stock. I mean, this is really, we're just trying to use everything we have. This isn't like fine cuisine. I'm not showing you things that take a lot of time or a lot of money. I'm doing things that are fast and using all of our resources. And I love making stock and I love the way it smells in the house and we can use it to make sauces. We can use it for soups, we can freeze it. So basically I cooked it for about seven hours, brought it to a boil, starting with cold water always on the, on the chicken, brought it to a boil, let it simmer for hours. And if you look down, this is kind of what it looks like. It's so beautiful. Oh my God. He really, I love it. Okay, so now I just wanna show you this goodness in here. See all this? Holy Toledo. So we're basically gonna discard all of this. And the idea is we want to press out as much liquid as possible because the liquid is the gold in here, okay? So we're not going to be able to get it all because I don't want to have like a neck injury from trying to squeeze this out. But in general, um, we're going to squeeze as much as we can, discard it over here. <clears throat> and unfortunately, I don't have something that's called a chinois here or um, a china cap. And that's like traditionally always used to strain stocks because it has such a fine mesh screen on it. It catches all the impurities, all the fats, all the little peppercorns, all the things that we don't want in our stock. Um, that's why, you know, before I told you we put um, the onion skins in it, it doesn't matter because we're getting rid of it. But you see, this is a slotted spoon or, you know, a, um, a Chinese, oh my God, I forgot the name right now. That's crazy, but whatever. Um, you see how it has all those holes in it? We need something that has a finer hole, but I'm just using that to get the big pieces out. Okay, so now let me move this over here. And now if I had a chinois, this is when I would use the chinois. I don't have one. And I, this is the biggest strainer that I have. It's pretty small. So it's not the best strainer for this job, but we're gonna make do. 
And now I'm gonna pour this beautiful broth. So much easier that I took all the stuff out of it. And you see all those impurities getting caught in the strainer? We don't want that. And, um, you know, this has been sitting on the stove kind of cooling all day. And we're gonna put this in the refrigerator overnight. You can either leave it in the pot that it's in, or you can separate it into other uh, containers. And then tomorrow, um, overnight or six hours or more, there's gonna be a layer of fat on the top, which, you know, it's like schmaltz. It's like Jewish fat. So it's Jewish chicken fat. You can use that in cooking. So we can remove that. We can use that in our cooking. And then we will have a very clear, almost clarified broth with no fat. And then we'll decide what we're gonna do, if we're gonna use it right away or freeze it. So we're day three, quarantine cuisine. This is just like a tip. I'm actually preparing this chicken for tomorrow. Spatchcock, you know about that? Weird word, I know. Um, it's a way to cut a chicken where you basically take the um, spine out and flatten it so that it cooks a little bit more quickly. And you can actually put it on the grill or a flat top or in a cast iron pan. So it saves a lot of time. It also is like a really beautiful presentation. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. Um, and you know, with these videos, because I'm really not doing anything super gourmet because we don't have the time or the, the, the items to do that. Um, and we're trying to conserve and just do simple things. I'm just gonna show you as many tips as I can because what I think is so obvious to other people, it's not. So when you're using a cutting board, I always put a wet paper towel underneath so that the cutting board doesn't slip. You could also, if you don't wanna waste paper towels, you could wet a dishcloth and put it underneath or you could use one of those little rubber mats that people put in their closet and put their dishes on top of so that things don't slip. You could put that underneath to kind of allocate that to your cutting board. Anyway, so we're gonna take a chicken, a whole chicken, and we're gonna turn it over, okay? So this is the neck of the chicken, these are the legs, these are the wings, and I have a scissor, okay? And actually, I'm gonna turn it around this way, if you don't mind, and we're just gonna cut right down the side of that bone. And it's pretty easy to do with scissors, you just, you could also use a knife. It takes a little bit of elbow strength. Okay, great. We got that. Not so bad. So now I'm just going to turn it around this way and do the same thing to the other side. I love breaking down poultry. I love fabricating meat. There's like a part of me that always wanted to be a butcher. I know that sounds weird, but I love it. I find it really satisfying. And the funny part about it is I'm super squeamish with like blood and cuts and I don't like watching anything medical on TV, but there's something about breaking down a chicken I love. Now I'm gonna save all these extra pieces for chicken stock. So now we have the inside of the chicken. I'm gonna take a knife and just cut right down the center of that bone. See how easy that was? And go like that on that side. And now it's completely flat. So let me just show you. This is the, the underside of the chicken. There's the breast bones. I'm gonna turn it over. And it's perfectly flat. How cool is that? Hey guys, it's day three quarantine cuisine. This is Chef Lisa, part two, spatch cock chicken. Um, okay, so I basically took the backbone out of two whole chickens. I showed you that before. See how nicely they lay flat. They're gonna cook like 20% faster. It's gonna be a gorgeous presentation. I'm gonna put it on the grill on both sides and then I'm gonna bring them into the kitchen and finish them in the oven. Um, because we don't have like a lot of onions and we don't have a lot of garlic and a lot of things that I normally would put in a chicken in addition to herbs and spices, I'm just making a little spice blend. And because I have a lot of spice, I have a lot of backup in my pantry. So I have paprika, I have poultry seasoning, I have garlic powder, I have kosher salt, I have herbs de Provence, 
and I have turmeric. In addition to that, I'm gonna add some black pepper. And the reason why I put this all in a bowl is because I'm gonna make a little mixture out of it, my own spice blend. Because if I was to pour these spices onto this chicken, it wouldn't get distributed as evenly. And I don't like to put poultry like in a bowl, mix it together and then put it in a bag. Just put it in the bag first because chicken, it's, you know, it's dangerous. You can have salmonella. I don't want it splashing all over. So I basically cleaned up my area, sanitized everything, put my chicken in here. And now I'm just gonna mix this little spice blend. So as opposed to just adding one spice at a time into this bag, this is like my own spice bin that you buy. Super, I mean, I don't know why we spend money on these spice blends. It's really super, super easy. And you can add anything. So the first thing we're gonna do is just put some oil, any oil you want. I don't care, it can be peanut, canola, sunflower, avocado, extra virgin olive oil. Just don't put truffle oil, unless you can. And if you can, then good for you. Okay, so I'm gonna take half of the spice and throw it in this guy. Half the spice and throw it in this guy. Okay. And then we have um, a small garden and I got some rosemary from it. So, you know, you just, sorry. <laughs> you just take the rosemary and you pull it off the stem from the top down. So easy. Okay. A little rosemary in there which pairs really nicely with chicken and then i'm gonna zip this up this is a two gallon ziploc bag so it's lots of room for it to breathe and to marinate marinade shown as they like to call it in my kitchen that's the situation okay and have you met my sous chef cameraman parker Okay, anyway, so we're basically, sorry, it's getting silly, it's, it's late in the day. Um, yeah, we're just marinating this and it's like no fuss, no moss. We're gonna let this sit overnight. Look at that, beautiful. It's gonna be so flavorful. All of these flavors are gonna get deep into the chicken. Super inexpensive, super easy. And that's it. Hey guys, so it's day three quarantine cuisine. Just finishing up that chicken stock that I made. So um, it was in the refrigerator overnight. And what happens is all the fat rises to the top. Parks, if you can get over the top of this and get an overhead. This is actually a very small amount of fat. Um, you can take a ladle and just gently kind of move everything out of the way. You do a circular motion and then you can just kind of gently scoop the fat off the top. And I really don't want to lose any of that liquid if possible. I mean, I'm going to have to lose a tiny bit, but we can just tap the fat out. And we can save this fat. This is chicken fat, schmaltz. We can use this for cooking. Um, you can cook a nice steak with it. You can cook hash browns, eggs, that would be delicious. And this is a small amount, but I'm definitely gonna save it. And then we're gonna have this beautiful clear stock. And another way that you can get just that last layer of fat out is you can take a cheesecloth or a paper towel and you can just kind of lay it on the top and lift it up. It didn't work that great, but in general, it usually does. Um, so once we do this, get all that fat out. And if you have a little bit left in there, it's really not a big deal at all. It's, it's not so hard to get out because it's very congealed. We're gonna wipe this ladle out. And then I buy these uh, core containers. They're like, you know, Chinese soup containers and they're so handy and reusable and they're really sturdy and they can actually go into the freezer. And um, you can freeze this for at least three months. 
just leave about an inch at the top for expansion. In addition to that, this is, tastes so good. You can see the color of it, how nice and amber it is. We can take a rotisserie chicken or leftover chicken or any kind of protein, tofu, um, vegetables, and warm them up in a pan and add this and we have an instant soup. So it's so easy. So I'm gonna just put this in the rest of the containers, put some in the fridge to use this week and the rest in the freezer. Okay, see you later. Okay, day three, quarantine cuisine. Chef Lisa roasted cauliflower just out of the oven, putting a little bit of Malden sea salt for finishing, for a little crunch, super simple. Leave that residual oil in the pan. You could put toasted sesame seeds on here. You could put toasted breadcrumbs. You could put um, a flavored yogurt sauce. So many things you can do. You could puree this and it would be a delicious soup. You could put this in a pasta. But we're just gonna have it as a side dish tonight. Uh, we also made a couple other items. And this is just gonna be a side accompaniment. We're trying to be really vegetable heavy while we have fresh vegetables right now. Okay, thanks for tuning in.